Hello everyone and Merry Christmas. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ, his Son. Amen. Welcome to this day of worship. We want to begin by saying a word of thanks to my friend and fellow pastor Joy Inglesman for coming in and playing the organ duet that you just heard um, with me playing on the piano. We also want to say a word of thanks to Ruth for playing the organ this week and to all of the families that are part of this service and the services that we've had the past few weeks during Advent. It's been so good to hear and see different faces and voices throughout this series, particularly in this unique year that we are in. So thank you to everyone who's been willing to come in and be involved in these services. We also want to remind you that there are many ways to give here at Hope Fellowship. You can use our online uh, church app through the Church Center giving platform. You can mail in your check using our regular Hope Fellowship address, which is being forwarded to a P.O. box. You can come in during office hours and drop something off, or you can contact your deacon and they will help coordinate um, picking up an offering um, from you if that is helpful as well. Um, regardless, we want you to know that we are grateful for you and so thankful for your generosity uh, throughout this year and particularly during this season of the year as well. Thank you. And with that, come, let us worship and adore our Lord. Hear these words from Isaiah 9, verse 6 that call us into worship this morning. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We light this candle as a sign of our waiting and hope for the coming Christ. Merry Christmas!
Good morning, Hope Fellowship family, and a Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. Will you join me in prayer? God, we greet your coming with wonder. You come to be with us, yet you remain far greater than we can imagine. You are near, yet your wisdom sets you apart from us. You appear among us, yet we cannot describe your glory. God, we greet your coming with repentance. We are more or less satisfied with ourselves, but your presence exposes our sin and brokenness. We are self-confident, but you challenge our confidence in ourselves. We are proud of our understanding, but you show us that we do not know everything. God, we greet your coming with joy. We had no, t we had no true idea of what you are like, but you have shown us yourself in Jesus Christ. We felt our human life could be of no importance to you, but you have shown us its value by appearing among us as a person. We are aware of this gulf between us and you, but you have bridged it with love and you have brought us together. God, we greet your coming in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we pray all these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Hi, Hope Fellowship. I'm Kira. And hi, I'm Paul. Uh, I'm Andrew or Andy. And we're going to read you the book, All the Colors of Christmas. Paul, what's your favorite color of Christmas? My favorite color is gold and golden because it reminds me of the lights. All right. This book is by Matthew Paul Turner, and it's illustrated by Jillian Gamble. Andy, are you ready to help me? Mm -hmm. All the colors of Christmas. Christmas is red. Christmas Christmas is white. It's a shiny new sled. It's and candy canes. It's a toy store lanes. It's sprinkled on sweet bed bread. It's packages with bows and Rudolph's bright red nose. It's pictures drawn and dressed up lawns. It's warm mittens when it snows. It's the drummer boy's drum. The pur -pum -pum. Pum. It's Santa Claus and cranberry sauce. It's apples, pears, and plums. It's presents that we send to family and friends. It's jolly cards and merry hearts. Yes. Yes, Christmas is red. Christmas is green. Christmas is green. It's an evergreen scene. It's holly sprigs and mistletoe twigs. It's emerald lights along a gleam. It's garland on rails and pine needle trails. It's winter boots and funny elf suits. It's that old. Mr. Grinch. It's Granny Smith's pies and plaid bow ties. It's fresh potpourri and that smells so Christmassy. It's stockings hung high. It's tinsel on trees and grass iced by freeze. It's Christmas tree balls and artwork on walls. Oh, yes, Christmas is green. Oh, green. Yeah, I'm close to that. Oh, this is your favorite, Paul. Christmas is gold. Christmas is gold. It's bright ribbon unrolled. It's jingle bells and warm, yummy smells. It's heirlooms. The Chris, yes, Christmas is gold. It's it is gold. It's heirlooms you are not allowed to hold. It's 
dancing dancers all tapping among holiday trappings it's nutcracker crowns and christmas eve gowns it's glittery gift wrapping it's a big turkey roast and walnuts you toast it's crackling fires and glorious choirs it's an ornament that you love the most it's kids shouting behold wearing halos and robes it's treetop stars and old church bazaars yes christmas is gold and you can say it too christmas is blue it's the wintry sky hue it's flannel sheets and shaped cookie treats it's a lake frozen through it's big puffy coats and huge parade floats it's juniper trees and blue spruce wreaths it's, it's christmas blue is blue it's writing santa notes it is blue it's a sweater mama knit christmas streets yet christmas is black christmas is black Listen. it's a turquoise lights in the darkest of nights it's a snowman's outfit. It's memories old and new of loved ones gen gone too soon. It's an Elvis song and nights growing long. Yes. Christmas is, is black. Blue. blue. Look at the blue. Christmas, Christmas is white. Christmas it's, is right. That's right. It's warm candlelight. It's mountain tops and small fancy shops. It's turtle doves flight. It's December snowstorm and blankets so warm. It's angel wings and the song that we sing about our dream for Christmas morn. Look at the reindeer, it's got white. It's sleigh rides through snow and lights that glow. It's North Pole tails and frosty exhales. It's cocoa with marshmallows. It's the star shining bright on the holiest of nights. It's powdered cakes and peppered snowflakes. Yes. yes. Christmas is white as can be. It is white, isn't it? Christmas is brown. It's, what is it? Christmas is wild. It's pine cones scattered round. It's caramel corn and, and copper French horns. It's know. winter frozen ground. It's firewood piled high and reindeer that fly. It's cinnamon and ginger treats. It's homemade pecan pie. Backstage. Ooh, backstage. backstage. It's cradled soft with hay and donkeys gentle bray. It's God within a baby's skin on that very first Christmas day. I love these pictures. Mm -hmm. It's shepherds kneeling down and wise ones gathered round. It's Mary's sigh and Jesus's cry. Yes, Christmas is brown. Christmas is and you. you. It's yeah. you and you. It's your own unique hue. It's your wondrous gleam and your bedtime dreams. Your color each yeah. Christmas a is, new. Christmas is you. Christmas is red. It's you. And you. And it's your yeah. tinsel and flair and, and the yeah. gifts that you share. Yeah. It's your jingling yeah. smile and your fa la 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 oh. style. It's how you love and how you care. Come sit, Pa. It's the song that you sing and the light that you bring. It's your heartfelt compassion and your hope put in action. It's your thrill for the little things. It's your love for what's true. It's the good that you do. You're a part of the story the joy and the glory. Yes, Christmas is you. Do you wanna say it? Christmas is you.
the end. Please join me in a prayer for illumination. Lord, may your word be our guide, your spirit our teacher, and your glory our single concern. Amen. Well, today we are wrapping up our series um, this Advent called Honest Advent when we've been taking a deep dive into the text from Isaiah 9 together each week. We've been looking at the four royal titles or names given to Jesus, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And it is our prayer by taking this deep dive into Isaiah 9 and these royal titles that you've been able to have um, a, a fresh experience of what Advent is all about. And we pray that it has increased your wonder and awe for the gift that God's Son is in our lives and in the world. Today we're going to take one last look at Isaiah 9 together, zeroing in on one little phrase from Isaiah 9 verse 6 together that helps us be able to see the, what the significance of Christmas and the Christmas season is for us and for the world. So would you go with me now to Isaiah 9 verses 1 through 7, as well as um, from the Gospel of John chapter 1, we're going to be reading verse 14. Hear these words from our Lord. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he, God, humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, and they will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And then from John 1, verse 14, which says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Since we are celebrating Christmas here at church a couple days after Christmas Day this year, I can ask a question that I normally wouldn't be able to quite ask yet if this were a true Christmas morning service. So, what was your favorite Christmas gift that you received this year? Maybe it's a new Lego set or a brand new um, array of art supplies. Perhaps it's a new piece of shimmering jewelry or a brand new sweater in your favorite color. Maybe it's a new technology gadget or a power tool you've been needing for all the COVID house projects we've all been into. Maybe it was an almond filled stick of banquette or a Dutch letter that was dropped off at your door. Or in this particular year, was your favorite gift a phone call or a FaceTime from a friend or your family? According to dictionary.com, a gift is something that is given willingly to someone without payment. Something that is given. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. A son is given. Jesus, God's son, the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, and prince of peace that we've been talking about these last weeks is given to us. 
willingly and without payment from us. Today, this Christmas, we celebrate and remember that Jesus has been given to us all. This means that God did not withhold Jesus' presence in our lives. Rather, God gave his one and only son to come live and walk and work and preach and love here on earth with us. As John 1.14 reminds us, the word, Jesus, became flesh and made his dwelling among us. He was given to us to live with us. Or as Eugene Peterson said, Jesus moved into the neighborhood. When someone moves into a neighborhood, what happens? They bring into the hood their own way of being and living and existing in their space, don't they? Let's just take outdoor Christmas lights, for example, and outdoor Christmas decorations. Every neighbor brings their own sense of personality and style to it, don't they? Some neighbors go with the classy Christmas decor and have all white twinkly lights, candles in the window, and the big spotlight on the wreath on the front door. Others go with the all-out blow-up Christmas characters in all of their their cartoon-like fun. I see you, Brian Swally. Some people are the neighborhood comedians, or you could say the Scrooges, and they put a sign in the yard saying, here to see lights, look to your left or to your right. Yet others go full on Clark Griswold, like one of my favorite homes here over on Mockingbird Lane in Cherry Hills that has covered every possible tree, bush, and rooftop line of their home with lights of every color. Every one of our neighbors, including each one of us, bring our own unique character and way of being into the world. Just like the book that we heard read by Kira and the boys, All the Colors of Christmas, we each bring our unique hue and color and personality and gifts and talents into this world. And Jesus was no exception to this. In John 1, 14, we read that Jesus was given to us by God. He made his dwelling among us full of grace and truth. Jesus brought into the neighborhood the fullness of grace and truth when he came into the world as a child, God's son given to us all. Jesus came into this world full of grace and truth. Let's unpack that a little bit more together because I think that we have lost sight of what that phrase, grace and truth, really means for us and for the world. First, grace. For most of us, we might define grace, or at least the biblical concept of grace, as forgiveness of sins. And this isn't a bad way to define it. However, there is more to it than that. In the Greek, the word for grace is charis, C-H-A-R-I-S, which means good will, loving kindness, or favor. As one study material I read this week said, grace is the merciful kindness by which God, exerting his holy influence upon souls, upon human beings, turns them to Christ and keeps and strengthens and increases them in Christian faith, knowledge, and affection. Grace is God's merciful, loving kindness. And this kindness is what we are told that Jesus came to this earth with in all of its fullness. Jesus became flesh and made his dwelling among us, full of grace, loving kindness, and full of truth. Truth. Oof, this can be such a tricky word, can't it? In this past election season, we've heard so many claims of truth from all aspects of the issues and platforms that it's hard to even hear the word truth and not shudder just a little bit. 
What truth is has lost its luster and significance in our world. But I wonder, how would you define the word truth? And this is not asking what do you believe to be truth, but what does the word truth mean? For some, truth is what is right. For others, truth is defined as something that is not false or deceitful, but the opposite. They might say that truth is what is fact or reality. Again, when turning to the Greek word that John uses here in verse 14, we learn that the biblical understanding of the word truth is more nuanced and I would argue more wonderful than the way we might define and understand the word from our human perspective. In Greek, the word translated here as truth does mean what is true and what is reality, but it also means truth as personal excellence with an open and honest mind that is free from affection and aspirations and simulation, falsehood, or deceit. In other words, truth is seeing or stating or defining things according to what actually happened or happens. Truth is seeing things as they are. Seeing things as they are. Or in Jesus' case, being full of truth means that he sees us for how we are in all of our humanness, the good and the ugly, the beautiful and the broken, the joy and the sorrow, the darkness and the light. Jesus sees us for who we are just as we are. Jesus sees behind the masks and the walls and the hurts and the hopes and the fears into the raw, real, authentic state of our hearts and minds and souls. And thanks be to God, Jesus does not cast us aside when he sees the true state of our lives. Jesus didn't wave the white flag of surrender when he came to earth and saw the truth and the true state of our lives and asked God to beam him straight back up to heaven. No. When Jesus was given to us, he stuck around. And he is still with us, God with us in this very moment. Because Jesus came to earth to live in the neighborhood full of grace and truth, and because it does not matter who we are, what we have done, or what we have left undone, and it does not matter what we have said or what we have left unsaid, the merciful, loving kindness of Jesus, who sees us just as we are, has been given by God as a child born in a manger. And Jesus has been given in a whole other way in our lives and in the world too. God gave his son to the world to bring the fullness of grace and truth into the world. And Jesus was also given in order to take that long, slow, painful walk to Golgotha where he was nailed to a cross and was left to die. Jesus was given over to death so that we might be set free from the sin and the darkness that weighs us down. Forgiven. 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 I love how the author and painter, Scott Erickson, whose book, Honest Advent, has been our inspiration for this series, points out this beautiful thing about the word forgiveness that I have never noticed before. Did you see it? In the middle of the word forgiveness is the word given. Forgivenness. Scott Erickson writes this about forgiveness. This is why the kingdom of heaven 
is built on the foundation of forgiveness. Forgiveness rights the wrongs, removes what got in the way, restores the relationship. Love has always been about forgiveness. Forgiveness. Presence not withheld in the midst of seeing the real. Unquote. Jesus became flesh and blood, moved into the neighborhood full of grace and truth so that we, all of us, can experience the beautiful gift given to us willingly and without payment, the gift of forgiveness. Our wrongs have become right. Our relationship with God is restored. The presence of Jesus in our lives and in the world is not kept from us, even when he has seen the reality, the truth of who we are. Given and forgiven. Why? So that love and mercy and kindness can take over in our lives. And now today, there are two invitations for us here before we close. First, if you have not experienced the reality of Jesus' presence in your life and the merciful, loving kindness of Jesus as your Savior, let today be the day that you step into the givenness of our Lord that is for you. May the child that is born, the son that is given, set you free to live a life marked by God's love mercy, and kindness for you. The second invitation for us today is gratitude. Gratitude for the best gift we have received on this Christmas. The fullness of grace and truth given to us when Jesus entered the world over 2,000 years ago. And gratitude for the forgiveness forgivenness we have received because of the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord given for us all. Lastly, the grace and truth of Jesus is meant to be shared, my friends. Our gratitude can best be shown when we share this good news with the world. This means we share the gift of grace. We give the gift of merciful, loving kindness to others, all others, no matter how they might decorate their lawns for Christmas. It also means that we share the gift of truth with others, seeing others for how they truly are and not casting them aside when we don't like what they say or do, or how they live. It's not easy, I know. But we love and we serve a Lord and Savior who has shown us what it looks like to live with the fullness of grace and truth in this life. We have a child that is born, a son that is given, to shine a light upon the way that we must go. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son. Glory, light, given, full of grace and truth. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Please pray with me. God, you have caused this day to shine with the brightness of the true light, your glory. Grant that we who have seen and known the mystery of that light here on earth 
might live lives filled with gratitude for the gift of your Son who has been given to us and to the world. God, we praise you that the light, love, and hope that is in the world has a name. Jesus. Come, let us adore him. In his name we pray. Amen.
Hi friends, the Hallelujah Chorus won't sound the same without you, but I hope you can sing from home. Hallelujah. into the world, carrying Christmas with you into everyday life. Be the hope and joy, love and peace that has been shown to us through God's Son, Jesus Christ, who has been given to and for us all. And as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his face toward you and give you peace, now and forever. Amen.